So now we're going to work on this 96 wind start to 3.8. Now we're done with our computer work and we've got four codes, P1537, P1538, 301, and 302. The 1537 and 38 are indi indicating intake manifold runner control, 301 and 302 indicating misfires. Now which should we treat first? Well in this case, as I assess this vehicle, it's got 95,000 miles on it, and it's, it look, it's got the original plugs and wires on it. So it's time for a tune-up anyway. Now that tune-up, plugs and wires, could obviously cause that 301 and 302 misfire, but so could the intake manifold control problem. Because as you know, that is introducing EGR gas into the intake. Now my suspicion here is that some of the EGR ports are plugged up. So we're going to have to investigate this, and we're going to have to take the intake plenum off so that we can get down to the intake manifold runner controls. It's much easier to change the spark plugs with that off anyway. So as long as I've got to go that deep, I'm going to change the spark plugs and wires, repair the intake manifold problem. Then if after all this is done, we still have a 301 and 302, then I'll have to investigate that. But at least then I'll know that I've got good spark plugs and wires and a good baseline of that before I have to pursue that further. Okay, the first thing I'm going to test is EGR to see if that's even working. Pop this out of our way so you can see it better. The EGR valve is right under there. We're going to take that off. Put our vacuum pump on the EGR. And we're going to give the EGR a vacuum. Okay, you can hear the engine stumbling as we give it vacuum. So the EGR is working. Next thing I want to know for evidence is whether or not the intake manifold runner actuators are working. Now as you come over here and look at this, you can see in the vacuum line, actually one of the vacuum lines has got a hole in it. So that's going to be a vacuum escape and break that down. But at this point, we'll fix that, but I still can test these even without that. So what I'm going to do is pull the vacuum line off of each of the <coughs> actuators. So we'll get this out of the way so that you can see it. Now look at this actuator. I'm going to give this vacuum, which is what the computer allows it to have, and you should see the actuator rod move. Put my vacuum pump on there. And I'm going to pump it up. You can see from the gauge it's not holding vacuum and the actuator is not moving. The rod's not moving. Now let's go and test the other one. Okay, we're going to put vacuum on the front actuator and we're going to give it vacuum. Now to do this we're going to have to go around here to see the rod. Now as I give this actuator vacuum you should be able to see that rod move. Now we got a little incidental problem here. The rod actually is supposed to go into this hole, but you can see that it the little clip is off of it. Now what I'm talking about there, this is a new actuator motor. On the very end of this there's supposed to be a little clip that goes in there to keep that on. That clip is broken. So when this actuator is moving, it's actually not pulling anything because it's not engaged. So you can see where that clip is supposed to be and it's not engaging in that arm. So I'm just going to push it in. We'll have to put a new clip on it. Now as I give it vacuum, you can see it pull the arm. I'm going to release the vacuum. That's how it should work. So our EGR valve is working. One of the runner control actuators is bad, the other one is good. Now we're going to take the intake off so we can go down and actually look at the intake manifold runner controls from the inside. To make the job easier, the first thing we're going to do is remove the cowl. So now we're going to take that upper intake off and look at our intake manifold runner control. Okay, we've taken off your breathing tube, taken off all the bolts down below that hold it down. We're ready to take the intake off.
Got some vacuum lines that come into the back. Need to take them loose. When we get this plenum out, we'll show you the back side there so you'll have an idea of what you're going to work with back there because you kind of have to go by feel. Okay. That should be all. Let's see. On that back side, you've got the two vacuum lines. You've got the vacuum lines here and here, and then your electrical connector as well. Okay, we've got the upper plenum off. Now we can see the intake manifold runner controls in the EGR ports. Let's take a little closer look. I'm going to come in close on this EGR port and you can see that one's pretty much wide open. Now we move over to this port and you can see it's almost completely plugged up with carbon. And then we go back to this one. It's somewhat restricted. Not wide open and not completely closed. Now I can't get the camera in backwards to show you the back ones, but on this one the EGR port is completely wide open just like this one. This one here is somewhat restricted, a lot like this one. And this one over here is almost completely restricted, just like this one. For those who aren't that familiar with this system, here's that actuator and the rod back here that moves we can move it with our finger, move it up and down, and you can see what it's doing inside the little butterfly valves that are opening and closing. Now as you remember, this actuator did not work, so when it was giving vacuum, it did not pull closed. These are normally in a normally open position when the actuator is operated it closes them but this was defaulting to the open position so our code was that this one was stuck in the open position now if we go to the front ones you can see in there those are closed they're stuck in the closed position now why are they closed when these back here are open the default position if the actuator is working and working correctly is in the open position and then you pull the plunger and they close. Now the front bank is stuck closed and if you recall the reason is is that clip had popped off. To show you what I'm talking about I'll reach down here and I'll pop this plunger off or this rod off and then now this this valve can, can move by hand go to the closed position and you see it's closed. The spring tension that is inside that actuator keeps the valve open in the default position. So when this little clip pops off it's going to stay in whatever position it was in last and if the valves were in the closed position because the arm is no longer attached it can't pull it back to the open position. You can move it by hand and open them but it won't do it with vacuum. So we had two intake manifold runner control codes, one stuck open, one stuck closed. The back side, the valve was open by default and the actuator would not pull it closed. So the computer was seeing that it's stuck open. Now the front one, the little clip had popped off that attaches the rod from the actuator to the runner control and it popped off with those valves closed. Since it was popped off the actuator was actually moving but the clip was not attached so the actuator could not pull it back to the open position. So we had one code stuck open, one code stuck closed. We got EGR ports that are restricted. So what we're going to do is clean all this out, clean all the EGR ports out, put it all back together, we can change our spark plugs and wires and see how it runs at that point. Here's the three spark plugs on that back side. You can see the middle one is fouled out pretty bad. But well, we're going to change all three spark plugs and spark plug wires. Now we've got the manifold vacuum actuator, the new one mounted. We're going to put vacuum to it. You can see we've got a new clip on the end of it. Now we apply vacuum to it. 
You can see we got a new clip on it so it's staying in place. And when we go over here you can see it actually moving the valve in there. Now we come back to the other one. Now this one is actually working but I'm not going to go into this deep not changing both especially when this one was acting up with a bad clip. By vacuuming you can see it moving. And the same thing we go in and look at the valve. And you can see it working with vacuum as well. Now you can see our EGR ports. We've got them all cleaned out, cleared. So now we're ready to put that top plenum back on. Okay, we've got everything cleaned out. Now it's just time to put the intake back on, intake plenum. Okay, we've got it all back together except for the cowl. Let's start it up and see how it sounds. So we did the intake manifold runner control and got that all fixed. And when we pulled the spark plugs out, number two was fouled, so we knew number two was a problem. We put it all back together and started, and we still had a misfire. But we knew the plug and the wires were good, so we went to the coil, and we simply just isolated by pulling number two wire off, and it had no spark coming out of number two, but we did have spark coming out of the rest. We changed the coil, now the engine runs smooth with no misfire. So now all we have to do to finish the job is put the cow back on, and we'll be done.